Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3dgameman.com. The next question is about computer component temperatures. What are acceptable ranges of temperatures for different computer components? Well, before I get into that, you should have really good air circulation through your case. This is one of the most important things. No matter what environment you're in, always have enough fans that will provide positive airflow throughout the case, and that will give ample uh, circulation of air to cool all the computer components. You should have at least three 120 millimeter fans, one at the front, one at the back, and one at the top. The one at the front should intake cool air, and the one at the back and one at the top should exhaust the warm air. In an ideal situation, you'll have more fans, maybe a couple at the front, a couple at the back, a couple at the top, and maybe a large one on the side. Having Enough fans is extremely important. Having positive airflow throughout the case is really, really crucial. So what kind of temperature ranges are acceptable for computer components? Well, there are four computer components that you can really, really monitor extremely easy with software. And they are the CPU, the motherboard, the GPU, the hard drive, and you can also use a thermal probe to monitor the memory if you want to. Uh, that's not normally done, but if you want to monitor that as well, you can. You can also, of course, monitor the case temperature. Now, what's, what's an acceptable temperature range for CPU? Well, anywhere from 25 to 65 degrees Celsius. After 65 degrees Celsius, normally a CPU will start throttling back, the cores will fail, and you'll get a system instability. For the motherboard, uh, which there are two, you can monitor the south bridge and the north bridge. Uh, those should be uh, below... Um, 60 degrees Celsius and again that's a maximum temperature you start going beyond that you're going to get all kinds of uh, uh, system instability and problems um, the GPU which is the video card uh, has a wide range you can go all the way from um, you know 25 degrees Celsius all the way up to 85 degrees Celsius and if you don't have water cooling on some of the latest and greatest video cards you're going to get quite a high temperature so don't be alarmed if it's above 80 degrees Celsius unless you have water cooling, uh, which will lower it quite, quite substantially. Hard drive temperatures, again, the range can be anywhere from 25 degrees Celsius to all the way up to 55 degrees Celsius. But um, you should try and keep um, really almost all the components somewhere in between an acceptable range of 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Just remember that as long as you have everything within that range, it should be fine. And that is a little, little high, it's a little bit on the high end, but if you have it within that range, you, you'll normally have no problems whatsoever. Now, the other uh, component you can monitor is memory, and you can do that using a thermal probe. You can connect it to the memory if you want to, and the normally acceptable temperature for memory is around between 25 and, and around um, 60 degrees Celsius. Again, if you go over that, you're going to run into issues. It's very important to have your system cooled, especially if you're in a hot environment and you're overclocking. Now, there are different types of cooling for components. There's passive, which means it's just a heat sink. There's no fan on the heat sink. Active means that, that there's a heat sink and there's a fan on the heat sink. And there's water cooling, uh, which requires um, you know, tubes, uh, water blocks, radiators, and pumps. That's a whole different realm, really. But if you're an enthusiast, a lot of you are probably into water cooling already. And what kind of software should you use to monitor your different computer components? Well, I can recommend a couple. One of them being SpeedFan, and the other one is called Everest. Keep your questions coming.